The completable future API is flexible enough that it can be used as a multi-purpose asynchronous framework for many kinds of tasks. The task can be I.O. intensive or CPU intensive or a mix of both. Nothing in the framework mandates that it has to be a certain way. Certainly, if your use case demands multiple tasks to be run in parallel, then by using completable futures, you can spawn these tasks and let the original task die a natural death. One less thread improves the scalability for sure. But the completable future reactive model shines when the stages to be triggered are CPU bound and not IO bound. This allows the platform threads to be used only during the CPU operations and not wait during the IO operations. That's the basis for getting dramatic improvements in scalability for our applications. That's exactly the reason why in completable futures, the default executor service for running async tasks is the common fork join pool. As an example, if I make a web service call which takes five seconds to complete, then the thread which makes the call should be immediately released when the call is initiated. And another thread should then process the result of that call when it is available. On your screen is an example of an asynchronous HTTP call which does exactly that. This code uses a class called HTTP client, which is part of the JDK and is capable of sending an asynchronous HTTP request to a REST API. If you look through the code on the screen, the first thing it does is that it constructs an HTTP GET request to a URL, httpbin.org slash delay slash 10. This request will take about 10 seconds to respond. By the way, httpbin.org is a simple HTTP request and response service, which is useful for testing. We will use this for our examples in the course. Now, client.sendAsync sends a request to httpbin.org, but returns immediately. And then we go ahead and add a new stage called when complete to handle the response. The code within the when complete stage treats any HTTP return codes greater than or equal to 400 as an error and throws an exception because we don't want to treat any response with HTTP code greater than or equal to 400 as a normal response because those are errors, either a client error or a server error. Then we have the standard then apply and then accept. The then accept will finally print the HTTP response body. One thing you might have noticed is that this time we are not using the run async or supply async method to create the completable future object. It's the HTTP client send async method which provided us with the completable future. Let me also emphasize again that this code here does not wait on IO. It depends on completable future callbacks for the final result to be propagated to the user. Now, this is a good thing. So the next question is, can we as developers create a method which can return a completable future? Yes, we most certainly can. There are a few methods in the completable future class that we have not talked about. Complete and complete exceptionally. These are indicated on the screen. Let's take a deeper look at these methods. So in all of our example, it was always some other method that returned a completable future. And we proceeded to add callbacks like then apply, then combine, then accept, and so on. In other words, we were operating on the pipeline creation side of completable future. We have not sufficiently looked into the creation of the completable future itself. How does that work? Let's take a scenario. Let's say we want to create a method which will return a completable future object for some task. In our method, we can simply create a new completable future object with a default construct. That can be done. We spawn the task one way or another on a separate thread so that we do not wait for the task to complete. 
but we simply return the newly created completable future object to the caller. When the task completes with no errors and the result is available, we can simply call the complete method with the result. If the task fails, then we can call the method complete exceptionally with the relevant exception. So those are the two main methods, complete and complete exceptionally. Both of these methods complete the future, one with a successful result and another with an exception. Now these completion methods will also trigger the next stage in the pipeline if it's available. We have talked about this before when we talked about threads associated with the stages. So let's go ahead and clarify all this by looking at an example. Let's say we want to read a file asynchronously. Much of the I.O. related APIs in Java, like reading files, sockets, locking, have a non-blocking version as well. This was part of the change made as part of the Java NIO, that is the new I.O. We will write a method which will be using those classes. So here we have a method called read file async, which will read a file in an asynchronous manner and return a completable future of type string. Any caller would call this method and then use then apply, then compose, etc. to act on the returned file contents. So the first thing we do here is that we create a completable future using the default constructor because finally we have to return the completable future. Then we have the code which reads the file asynchronously using the NIO class called asynchronous file channel. The code then proceeds to open the file and reads the content into byte buffer. The read method immediately returns and does not wait for the read to complete. When the read returns, the entire method read file async returns with a completable future. Note that at this stage, the completable future is not completed, either successfully or exceptionally. That's important because if the caller adds more stages, they will not be triggered until this completable future is completed. A completion handler is provided to the read method, which has two methods, the complete and failed. The complete method will be called when the file is read successfully with the byte buffer which contains the file contents. As you can see, the method reads the file contents from the attachment and more importantly, it completes the completable future. If the caller of the method read file async has added a stage to the future, then that stage will be triggered at this point. I'm also not going to go into the byte buffer class, but it's part of the NIO package for efficient handling of data. My central purpose here is to talk about how completable future can be created and completed. Now the implementation of the failed method is fairly straightforward. It simply calls the complete exceptionally method with the exception. Now this will trigger the exceptionally stage if it is attached to the completable future pipeline. All this should give you a good idea of how to create your own method which returns completable future. In many cases, you might have to translate from the callback mechanism of doing things to the completable future way. That's what we saw in the example for asynchronous file read. In other cases, you will find that a particular class is directly providing you the completable future. That's what we saw when we used the HTTP client class.